KHF. I'm coming for you, you ginger bastard. Alright, so I finally finished Arm My Goddess, and let me tell you, this series is, no pun intended, a godsend after suffering through Love Hina. I absolutely loved this series in the end. It's a very heartwarming and well-written series with great characters, amazing relationships, and it just leaves you with a good feeling in the end. Makes you sound really gay when you try and describe it as well, apparently. I was afraid at some point that this series would come out as mediocre in the end, but in the end I absolutely loved it the whole way through. The plot is very well done, doing a lot of things right where a lot of other series went wrong. It doesn't drag anything out to the point of annoyance, everything lasts just long enough to serve a purpose. At least most of the time. There are some points that dragged, but they're forgivable in the grand scheme of things. There is a bit of filler, some of it is very questionably placed for how late it happens in the series, but with a couple of exceptions, most of it does at the very least serve the purpose of giving character development. Only a handful of things ever felt out of place to me, and again, they were all forgivable considering how well written the series was. The character relationships in particular were very well written. I'll get more into this when we discuss the characters, but this is another area where it went right, where a lot of series go wrong. Every character's relationship with another is done greatly, and it honestly got me to care about them. The comedy moments are simply hilarious. Some of the jokes, particularly from two certain characters, genuinely got me to LOL. I know. I was trying to study in my room, and all of a sudden I could hear you cackling at this series. I'm sorry, but it was funny, Emma. This series got me to properly laugh. Fine, great, laughing is fine, but I was trying to study at the time, you dick. Well, how was I to know it would make me laugh so hard? Look, I'm sorry, okay? Why did you let me stay with him, sis? But anyway, in summation, the series is really well written, the character relationships are great, and the comedy is genuinely funny. Overall, it all adds up to a very heartwarming series that's just a lot of fun to watch. But let's get on to discussing those characters that have those well-written relationships, shall we? Let's start with the main man himself, Keiichi. Keiichi is an all-around likeable guy. He's kind, he's pure-hearted, he's compassionate, he's caring, and he's overall just a good guy. But I don't mean that in the sense that he's a pansy. When the chips are down, you know he's got your back. Even if there's not that much he can do to assist the situation, he's gonna at the very least try. One thing I was extremely happy about is that the writers didn't find the need to needlessly make him a pervert like they normally do with a lot of nice guy main characters. That kind of thing is just unnecessary and I'm glad they didn't do it here. Another positive thing is that he figured out in just five episodes what normally takes most characters their entire series to figure out. Oh gee, I'm in love with the main female character. Congratulations on not being a dumbass, Keiichi. Uh, at least not a total one. The guy is just a pure-hearted, all-around good guy and I really liked him. Though... Uh, what is it? I don't know. It's... Something about him seems... familiar. And I'm not talking about the fact that he looks like Takia. Oh yeah, speaking of that, just what the heck is your relationship with this Takia person? I don't know what it is about this guy, but... Something about him is... Familiar. But... I can't quite put my finger on what. Wait, is your memory coming back? Do you think he had some kind of connection to your past? No, it's different this time. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I'm really getting a sense of familiarity from him and I don't know why. Should I mark him down as a point of interest? Do it. Might help us find something. Gotcha. We'll focus on that later though. Anyway, Keiichi, good guy. Really good guy. Liked him. Let's move on to the main heroine, Belle Dandy. Belle Dandy is without a doubt the sweetest of sweethearts. She's seriously one of the sweetest characters I've ever seen in... well... Anything! Like Heiji, she's just so pure-hearted and is just a good and sweet person. She's even more of a sweetheart than, dare I say it, than Chi. That's right, Belle Dandy is more of a sweetheart than Chi from Chobits. But at the same time, she is not a pushover by any means. You mess with her or anybody close to her and she will make you pay. Don't let her sweet attitude fool you, this lady is no pushover. This is yet another one of those areas I was talking about where this series went right, where a lot of others went wrong. 
Another is in that we didn't needlessly have her constantly showing her skin, with the exception of two episodes. They didn't need to have her constantly getting into fan service scenes in order to portray her as attractive. They let her sweet and caring nature do that for her. But I think what I liked most about her and Keiichi is just how well their relationship is done. I genuinely believed that these two honestly cared about each other, and they're definitely, without a doubt, one of the best anime couples I've seen in a long time. They didn't go through all this crap of, oh, I'm an overly aggressive douchebag who's starting to realise that I actually care about someone other than myself, but I'm too much of a prick to admit it. Or all this, Oh, I think I'm in love with this person, but I'm not sure. What is this that I'm feeling? Crap. They were just two people who honestly really cared about each other. Their relationship was just very well done and I honestly believed I was watching two people who genuinely loved each other. But back to what I was saying before, Belle Dandy is simply a sweetheart and a, just a great character. I dare you to not want to just give her a hug during this series. She's kind, sweet and caring but is no pushover. She is just simply an amazing woman. Hey! Kay, are you feeling all right? Yeah, why'd you ask? You are... Oh, that's weird. Guess it just slipped out. Anyway, moving on to who was surprisingly my favourite character in the series, Erd. Erd was awesome. No, seriously. Erd was freaking amazing. When she first came into the series, I thought I was going to hate her. I thought I was going to loathe her. I thought she was just going to be the token slutty older sister character and, well, while she was that, my opinion of her quickly changed because, well, Erd is a badass. Seriously, Erd's a badass. She doesn't take crap from Anybody, you get on her bad side and you're going to regret it. Erd was just awesome. She's not afraid to bend the rules. Plus, she didn't stand for all the crap that got in the way of Keiichi and Bell Dandy admitting their feelings to each other. She just wanted them to bloody get on with it. Erd is seriously badass. She's seriously awesome. Is she enough of a badass to be on Team Daigurin though? But what I really- Hey, don't pretend you didn't hear me. I asked you this about Saber a while ago and you ignored me then as well. Why don't you ever acknowledge my questions about Guren Lagan? Emma, don't ever ask me those questions again. Come again? There's a reason I'm ignoring them. Don't ever ask me those questions again, Emma. Hey now, why do you get so touchy when it comes to Guren Lagan? Kate, I think she has a right to know what happened. Wait! What happened? It doesn't concern you, Emma. Hey. I don't want to burden her with my own problems. She's got her own dreams to focus on. Alright. I'm sorry. Anyway. One of the things I really loved about Erd was, despite her... eccentric actions, it was shown that she really cares very deeply about her sisters. If one of them was in serious trouble, she would put everything else aside to rush to their aid. Even if it would result in her getting into serious trouble, she didn't care. All that mattered to her was protecting her sisters. Again, this is just another way the character relationships were just so well done. Erd was just an amazing character. Like I've said many times now, she was just a badass. She's really my kind of lady. Heh, <laughs> what is it with you and women like her? Hey, what can I say? I like the badasses. <laughs> that's obvious considering who you met. Chrono, you say too much. Mm. Now, as for Belle Dandy and Erd's little sister Scuttled, well, let me put this simply. I hated Scald. She was an annoying, whiny little brat who did nothing but get in the way and ruin everything. I've seen bratty little sister characters before, but Skull just takes the cake. She's like a precursor to Maho Kazumi, but at least Maho had a certain charm about her though. Skull, on the other hand, was just annoying as heck. Her and her stupid inventions did nothing but cause trouble. All she ever did was whine about how her big sister belongs to her. I just wanted to choke slam her through a table Undertaker style. 
She was just so annoying. Erd won even more points with me with the way that she would make fun of her and annoy her constantly. Skull is just an annoying little brat with a stupid robot sidekick. As for the main... Can we really call her a villainess? Well, in any case, as for the person who's meant to be the main villainess, Marla... Or was it Mara? Marla? Mara? Marla? Marla? Her name's spelt like Marla, but the characters in the series uh, pronounced her name like Mara. Was that just like a mistranslation in the dub? Can somebody please explain to me what the deal is there? Anyway, as for Mara... Quite honestly, I thought she was really pathetic. Seriously, I have never seen more of a pathetic villain in my life. Not once did she ever do anything even the slightest bit threatening. Her dark powers were never in the slightest bit scary, and she never really did anything all that evil. All she ever did was cause slight misfortunes to befall people to make them feel slightly bad. Oh wow, that's really scary. Let's all cower in fear of Mara and her ability to... turn people into scooters. And make children drop their ice cream. Huh. I mean, really? That's the best a first-class demon can do? Yeah, even I find her incredibly embarrassing. What makes this all worse is that Beldandy and Erd make it sound like she's somebody to be feared, but all she ever does is try and make people feel slightly upset. I can't believe this almighty first-class demon has the same motivations and strategies as Rita Repulsa. Mara's not a threat, she's just a pathetic toady who just wants to make people feel slightly bad. Some first-class demon. As for the minor cast, well, there's only really a few that are really worth mentioning. I know a lot of you will probably want me to say what I thought of Megumi, but quite honestly, she didn't really do all that much throughout the course of the series. When she first came in, I thought she was going to be the annoying little sister who ruins everything character, but in the end, Skald took that honour. There's not really much I can say on her character, she's just... Tomboyish. That's it, really. Sayoko was just a bitch. Seriously, this girl is a real bitch. She's nothing but a spoiled rich girl who's not used to being told no. She can't stand it when she's not the centre of attention, yet when guys try to ask her out, she'll just shoot them down in a cruel way if they're not good enough for her. I don't even want to talk about all that much because she was just a bitch. I really couldn't stand her. She's just a bitch and a hypocrite. It brought me so much joy when Erd gave her and her scumbag cousin what was coming to them. Oh, Erd, you're so amazing. Finally, Tamiya and Otaki, or as I like to call them, Balkan Skull. These two were seriously the most hilarious characters in the series. In fact, they're two of the funniest anime characters I've seen in a while. Their absolute moronic ramblings and ideas just had me in fits of laughter. Which I could hear while I was trying to study. I seriously wish they were in the series more because they were just hilarious. These two seriously need their own spin-off show. I wish I could tell you some of the funny things these two do and say, but honestly, I think it's best that you just watch the series for yourself and just, just see how hilarious these two are. Now, as for the dubbing, well, overall the dubbing was, it was just okay to me. Keiichi, Beldandi, Erd, and Balkan Skull's voice actors turned in a good performance, but some of the other characters well, Skald's screechy voice just made my ears hurt. Mara's voice actor was really chewing the scenery. It's like she was trying way too hard to sound like a villain. It was seriously like, Oh, I'm a scary first-class demon. Bow before my ability to make people feel slightly bad. She was just trying way too hard. Some of the background characters just sounded like they were stoned. I'm not saying it's a bad dub by any means. It's just... it's just not great, that's all. But I have seen much, much worse. It's not bad, 
it's just all right. But hey, I honestly didn't let it bother me that much. So overall, I loved this series in the end. It's a very heartwarming series with some comedy stuff that will really make you laugh and a story that will just leave you feeling good in the end. Not without its flaws, but hey, what series isn't? All its flaws are forgivable and it has a lot more good things going for it. I really can't say anything more about it, it's just simply a spectacular series and I honestly can't recommend it enough. It's just great. Well, I just hope the next series you watch isn't all that funny so I can get some peace and quiet and study without hearing you burst into fits of laughter every five minutes. Oh, would you cheer up, Emma?